Ready for some down-to-earth advice? Smooth stability tests require planning and practicality. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. Unless you know the plan, stability tests look like choreographed chaos. <laughs> they completely disrupt the vessel and all operations. All of this adds to a stressful and unpleasant experience. Unless. If you know the plan, things get better. Much better. This article provides a brief guide on stability tests, highlighting the key points for the vessel master. First, we should lay out the general sequence of events for a stability test. Roughly one month out from test day, you're going to receive a copy of the approved test procedure. Skim through this. About half of the procedure is boilerplate language that we have to include to comply with regulations, but the other half is actually pretty useful. It contains information for coordinating the test, contact information for the key players, and outlines the sequence of events. About one week out from test day, you're going to want to make sure that you've removed any dead weight items you can from the ship and store them securely off the ship. At one week out, you might also be having an advisory survey with the test coordinator. This is optional, may or may not happen for you. This is a chance to have an informal meeting with the test coordinator so that you can ask questions of them, make sure everybody's on the same page. They will also get a chance to walk through your vessel with you and identify any deadweight items that you may have missed or other major items that need to come off before the test. One day before the incline experiment, you're going to have the deadweight survey. This will be conducted mainly by the test coordinator and their staff. Then we have test day, the day of the incline experiment. For this day, you want to get the non-essential people off the ship. Some of the important things to make sure we have for this day are some line handlers for the mooring lines, and then we'll probably also need a tug on hand or a small boat. And then after the test, you don't automatically get a stamp of approval ready to go to sea. Normally there's some data processing that the test coordinator needs to do. That can take a little bit of time. What you can typically do is get a temporary stability letter from the Coast Guard so that you can resume operations the test coordinator can help you get this. And notice how I mentioned that the test coordinator is an integral part for all of this? Sounds like you want a trusted ally to help you out. DMS is more than capable to be your ally. We have extensive experience in both the scientific and practical aspects of stability tests. And we can provide you something that few others can't. Fast delivery. We provide preliminary results on the day of the test. So while everybody else is asking, hey, did we pass the test or not? I don't know, we're still waiting for the analysis. I will be able to give you a preliminary answer to that question on the day of the test with a final answer of the final test report coming a few days later after quality assurance. So if you want fast test results and an easy test experience, check out the website to learn more about our services and give us a call. Okay, let's get back to practical matters. The logistics of a stability test. Practically, every ship carries too much dead weight for a stability test. It's perfectly fine for an operational ship, but we're trying to convert your ship over to a scientific experiment. Some of that dead weight needs to come off and get stored pierside, at least temporarily. Shipping containers provide great options for secure storage, and if you're strapped for time, I would say specifically focus on cleaning out three types of spaces. Your bosun stores, your engine room tools and spares, and any other storage spaces that you have on the ship. That's going to hit most of your major deadweight items. Now we come to the day of the incline experiment. Now here's a big one. During the day of the incline experiment, just one day, all ship services will be offline. We're not going to have any water, no galley, no toilets. Plan for alternative arrangements that day. This is something that the test coordinator can handle for you if you want. We can arrange all of that to show up. We can also develop alternative arrangements. A great example would be pause the test halfway through, let people run on shore for a bathroom break. That's definitely something we can do. We're not going to make you suffer 16 hours without a toilet. 
I've been on that test. Trust me, you don't want to see it. Speaking of being humane, during the test, people need to stay in the same place. And I mean literally standing in the same spot. But it seems a little cruel to make someone stand in one spot for the entire day and unnecessary. So here's the humane compromise. Throughout the day of the stability test, we spend the majority of that time organizing, coordinating logistics, getting the ship positioned. Spaced throughout that day, we have these brief critical periods when the naval architects need to take measurements. These are the only times when people need to be at their designated locations. The remainder of the time, everybody is free to move around the ship. So to allow some freedom, what we do is we pick muster stations. We ask that anyone who is on board during the test picks a location for their muster station at the beginning of the day. Some place that they can stand while we take measurements. Don't care where it is, but you have to stay in the same location every time. Before the test, we record the location of every person at every muster station, and then you just go back to that location every single time that we need to take measurements. And that's how we allow people a little bit of humanity while still maintaining accurate measurements. It's a great compromise. The ship's crane. If you're doing a stability test, which is the full thing that includes an incline experiment, that will require a crane to move weights across the deck of the ship. In some cases, the ship already has an onboard crane with sufficient capacity to move those weights. The smart vessel owner is going to want to use that onboard crane and eliminate the cost of renting any pierside cranes. No problem. In those cases, yes, we can use the onboard crane. The only catch is the onboard crane has to be returned to its stowed position each time before we can take measurements. So it does tend to drag out the test a little longer. Now let's talk about privacy. During the deadweight survey, the test coordinator and their staff will need access to every room, every storage compartment, and every cabin on the vessel. This includes all the locked rooms, all the storage closets that nobody has opened in the last six months, and all the personal cabins. So you're going to need to ensure that keys are available to open all those rooms, and you're going to need to make arrangements to address any privacy concerns with crew cabins. Generally, we're very permissive on this one, and whatever the crew and the captain want to do, we're going to go along with that. Okay, mooring plan. During the test, we're looking for a mooring plan that will let the vessel float free without any of the mooring lines affecting the vessel heel in any way whatsoever. Now, most of the time, everyone's going to say, I can't see the mooring lines pulling on the vessel heel. It's not affecting the vessel heel. You're right, you can't see it. Our measurements can. So the best arrangement is to moor the vessel with a set of camels or Yokohama fenders at the pier side, set right at the water line of the vessel. Or if that's not an option, just before we need to take measurements, each time we'll use a harbor tug to pull the vessel slightly off the pier and take the measurements while it's just floating free right next to the pier. In either case, we're going to need to slack the mooring lines before we take measurements. And slack means extremely slack, with lots of droop almost touching the water. So plan for extra long mooring lines wherever you have them in your mooring plan. Okay, let's talk about the crew. Anyone not directly involved in the stability test needs to be off the vessel on the day of the test. This includes crew, shipyard workers, and visitors. Because once the test starts, the gangway is removed, and nobody can get on or off until the test finishes. We might allow a bathroom break in the middle, but that's not going to be a free-for-all. People on board should prepare for a long day. The test typically takes around eight hours to finish, but in extreme cases, I've seen them go as long as 16 to 18 hours. Think about that. 18 hours on a ship with no services. All ship services will be offline. That's why I encourage everybody to pack some food and water near their station during the test day. And this is what I mean when I say prepare for a very long day. To recap everything now, let's remember that number one, you've got the dead weight. Get it off the ship. That's one of the biggest things that I can tell people. Talking about that, one of the biggest things is deadweight survey access. Every space in the ship. One of the biggest catches there is crew cabins. 
let us know how you want to handle that. Mooring arrangement is another big one. I know that makes everybody nervous when I say the mooring lines have to be slack and the vessel has to float free. I understand and we're willing to work with you to limit the exposure and then we come to personnel. We're going to have minimum number of people on board during the day of the test. Everybody there should prepare for a very long day. Lots of caffeine, lots of water, lots of, lots of food. And just be prepared that there will be no ship services. Biggest one I can think of for that is think about where the toilets will be. And you notice for all of this, I've been talking about a lot of logistics. Smooth stability tests require planning and practicality. There's a whole lot of practicality in this, not a lot of theory. This guide highlighted some of the more common practical concerns for a stability test, but I kept saying, talk with your test coordinator. And that's the key element. I asked questions, clarified the division of labor, because our job is to make your job easier. Thanks very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect, and I wish you a smooth and successful stability test. I've got a secret for you. Anytime you see me showing something on video, I have services available that are way better than what you see for free. So check out the website to find out how I can make your next project easier.